Hello everyone and welcome to another episode to Intro to World Creator 2 Extras. I'm Tyler and in this video I'm going to feature a bit more fine tuning to our terrain. Now the last video we breezed over some quick bulk design but for me I'm all about sketching my ideas out on paper first and using that as an overlay on the terrain to kind of help me get exactly what I'm after. So now I'm in Photoshop here and what I've done is I've taken a piece of paper of mine on grid paper and I've sketched out my rough design as you can see here right in the middle and scanned it in. So I'm going to bring it into Photoshop here, crop it, change some light levels and then we're going to import that into World Creator 2 as an underlay so to speak. So let's go ahead and get this set up for World Creator 2. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and crop it to my bounding of the terrain. So we're going to select the crop tool. We're just going to drag the ends roughly to about where our edge of our terrain is. And then select enter. And if we want to stop here, that's fine. Or we can change some levels to kind of balance it out a little bit. It seems roughly okay with me. So let's just go ahead and export this as a JPEG. All right, so now that we have World Creator 2 open, what we need now is to bring that sketch in. Now there's two different ways you can go about doing this, but the best way to do this and to make sure that this sketch appears on the terrain the entire time we're modeling it is to import this as a texture. Now I know we're making a leap into a different territory ahead of schedule, but doing this is going to help make designing your terrain a little bit easier inside the application. So to get this in, we're going to go up in here and select the paintbrush icon, which is the textures. And then from here, we're going to add a layer. We can call this something like base sketch. Okay, and then we just make sure that we select add texture. And what you have here is it go ahead and defaults you to where the world creator directory is. And you can select this if you want, or you can go back here and select root. And then once you select root, it's going to bring up the four default folders where the default textures that we downloaded are located. And you can select any of these folders to add this texture to if you want to, but I wanna add a new folder and I wanna call this folder sketches. So how do you add a new folder? So what you need to do is you need to go to your library folder on your Windows Explorer, the same library folder that is explained right here in this button. So I've already got it open here. So right here in the middle, we've got the world creator library directory. This is is going to be a texture so we open up textures and you can see the folder structure is the same as the button structure here on the right we got gradients ground LUT and sky and those are the same button folder locations here on the right you get the idea so what we need to do is just create a new folder in this area so I'm just gonna call this sketches and then that's all we have to do right here so we can minimize this and it didn't show up but all you need to do is just go ahead and re-click on root and there you go, the sketch folder icon has appeared. So you can essentially make these directories an infinite amount of folder structures that you want to customize yourself. We'll go into this later detail once we actually cover textures. We're kind of overstepping into uh, other videos bounds here, but you get the idea of how it works. So we're going to go ahead and click on sketches and then we're going to just select create a world creator asset. And it brings up some options, but we're just going to work on this first texture here, which is the diffuse map. So if we click on it, then it brings up another window so that we can go hunting for wherever we saved that sketch texture. And I have that right here, this map sketch edit. So we're going to open this and there's our texture. And all we have to do now is select add and close. And it looks quite crazy right now, but that's because the size of this texture is super small. You can see it's just repeating this pattern, but that's okay. All we need to do, let's just zoom out here. All we need to do is just change the tile size right here to fit the scale of our terrain. So this four here, this four by four, let's change it to 4096. And there you have it. Here is our sketch scaled out to the size of our terrain. But with this sketch, it's actually really hard to see the terrain at all because the texture itself is super white. So to do this, let's just change the overall shade of this texture. So right here where it says shade, you just click on this color bar and let's just darken it up a little bit and get it really nice and about right here is fine. And you can see it's much easier to see the underlining detail of our terrain. We've even got the, the shading in here, which we didn't quite need, but you get the general idea of the shape that we're after by doing this sort of adjustment. And on the previous episode, I didn't do half bad of a job at making sure it was roughly 
in the general idea of what we're after. But here now we can actually go back to the surface tab base and then we can edit shape and then we can make sure that our fine tuning is a little bit more precise with our texture. So now I'm gonna run through and just start reshaping this terrain a little bit to match the sketch that we designed in the beginning. And as an example over here, I've kind of went ahead and designed where I want the sea edge or the beach edge to be, as well as kind of where I want the erosion to start developing into these channels here. So one thing I can do is just to make sure that this happens whenever we add filters is just make sure that these center sections are raised a little bit higher on the edge of the main erosion canal here. And then ensure that as best as I can with these sort of adjustments is that it is shaped so that we have a lower level here where the rivers so to speak would be placed there is another more extra fine-tuned detail where we can adjust this more manually but that's going to come at a later episode so let's just make sure that we adjust these so that all of our erosion whenever we add those filters kind of comes down these canal areas here but i don't want it to be too high because i still want there to be some natural fall off here especially right here along the beach edge See right now my elevation says that I am about eight or 10 right here and it goes a little bit lower right here. So let's go ahead and flatten our terrain back to sea level in these areas. So just right here, we're gonna make sure that it is exactly sea level. All right, so now that all of this area is perfectly flat, we can even go back and fine tune even more so the up and down to make sure it's exactly what we want. So let's go back. We're just going to drop the ones in the C just a little bit under, especially right here in the open, but I want to try and make sure there's somewhat of an island out here if possible. Might not work out with these large scale adjustments, but we can make it work out later on. I don't have a sub ridge line going here, but I feel like we can bump this up just a tad, just so long as we keep this secondary peak ridge here. There we go, some nice striations here. Then let's increase this to something around 400. Try and get our heels here a little bit. As well as our dune placement. We're going to be adjusting these so much more later on, but we're just getting the more generalized areas bulked up.
And there you have it, guys. We have done a little bit more fine tuning to our terrain. So the general shape of our terrain matches a little bit more closely to the sketch that we did previously. Join me in the next episode where we're going to be starting to add some more of our filter detail or our generators to the terrain to make it look more realistic. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>